In today's post, I will talk about how hedge funds and short funds are now betraying one another, stealing secrets, and causing other short funds to suffer large losses. Keep an eye out and let's get some money together. In addition, I would like to talk about the fact that certain hedge funds are actively purchasing additional shares of AMC. In addition, I would want to talk about the huge runner that has a 109% success rate in the Millionaire Mindset Trading Group. This was notified when I took a position, when I sold, and when I locked in those games, but let's go right to the elements that are most significant. There were some backroom disputes in high finance and Kristen tweeted about them. According to this report, Jane Street Group, a competing hedge fund firm, filed a lawsuit against Millennium Management, one of the largest hedge fund companies in the world, on Friday. The lawsuit made the accusation that Millennium Management stole a lucrative in-house trading method after two of its traders departed the company. It has been reported by Jane Street that traders Douglas and Daniel were actively involved in the process of formulating the strategy prior to their departure to join Millennium in February. According to Millennium, the theft was detected when the earnings of the company from the strategy dropped by more than 50% almost immediately after Douglas left the organization. This trading method was reportedly devised in order to take advantage of markets that were inefficient, as stated by Jane Street. It would appear that some hedge funds are now conspiring against one another, causing losses to one another, stealing trade secrets, competing with one another, and stealing money from other hedge funds. This is a consequence of the fact that certain hedge funds are now turning against one another. The majority of the profits that hedge funds make come from the theft or misappropriation of capital from other hedge funds, retail investors, market players, financial institutions, and overseas investors. Aside from the fact that they steal trade secrets outright, one of their primary strategies is to acquire and sell shares at the same time. I am able to provide you with two outstanding examples of this. At the very peak of the market, all of the analysts are advising you to buy shares of huge stocks, but those stocks end up plummeting according to a tweet that Robert sent out. Essentially, this is what is meant by the terms accumulation and distribution. In the beginning, banks will offer their products while simultaneously asking you and everyone else to come in and create bag holders. There is a requirement for these hedge funds to sell off their shares during the distribution phase, which is something that they clearly tell you to do shortly before a market crash. Let's take a look at NVIDIA as an illustration. Back in October, back in September, and back in August, these hedge funds were plainly piling up on NVIDIA shares, which were trading at a price range of $200 to $300 per share. Since then, NVIDIA has reached a price of $11,000 a share, and we are currently entering or possibly just leaving that distribution phase. Over the course of the past few months, we have witnessed each and every analyst in the globe forecasting insane price targets for NVIDIA that are higher than $1,200 per share. This is due to the fact that hedge funds demand investors such as ourselves to purchase shares from them whenever the price is at its highest point, before it begins to fall. In the case of NVIDIA, as I indicated before, it is possible to almost exactly observe the following. There is a zone of accumulation, the price is being pushed upward, and there is a zone of distribution just before the price begins to decrease. On the other hand, hedge funds also behave in a manner that is analogous to the previous example, in which they encourage investors to sell shares as the price falls to all-time lows in order to amass more. The fact that this appears to be happening with AMC at the moment is an intriguing observation to make. As I indicated at the opening of the video, it is evident that AMC has been driven to all-time lows, and it appears that these hedge funds are piling up today. Following the opening of the market in the morning, the Millionaire Mindset Trading Group engaged in trading Cavill as the stock that we were trading. As you can see, I told the group when the stock sank and then again when it rose by 40%, announcing that I was selling off the majority of my Cavill shares and selling the ones that remained for a profit of more than 100%. To ensure that you are able to take advantage of these daily earnings of 100%, it is imperative that you join the Millionaire Mindset Trading Group by clicking on the link provided in the description below. The bottoms in IMC Chicago, a hedge fund based in Chicago, have sold a big number of AMC put options and have instead added cool options, according to a tweet that Crystal sent out. IMC Chicago appears to be getting ready for either a leg up or the next substantial increase in the price of AMC, as seen by the fact that their put position has doubled in size in comparison to their cool position. The trick that these hedge funds try to play is that when prices go down, they tell you to sell while they purchase, and when prices go up, they tell you to sell while encouraging you to buy instead. That is exactly what they have attempted to do with AMC, 
which is to push the price down in order to shake out all of those paper hands so that they can accumulate and buy as many shares as possible before the price goes up. However, something that is collapsing or will soon be collapsing is actually a great deal more banks, as Chris Burst tweeted. In my video from the other day, you can see that Citibank is experiencing a decline. However, since then, it has increased, and it has escalated layoffs, which has resulted in the dismissal of 7,000 employees. The high costs that are a result of Citibank's reorganization are causing the bank's profit to decrease at the same time that its stock price is falling. According to the report, Citigroup's profit for the first quarter decreased by 27% as a result of the bank incurring expenditures related to its reorganization and decision to lay off employees. Citibank is not the only financial institution that is experiencing big losses as a result of decreased profits Bank of America is also experiencing these losses. You can see that the stock of the bank has dropped by 5% today as a result of the release of disappointing earnings the firm's profits have decreased by 18%. According to a report in the Coastal Journal, all financial institutions are continuing to liquidate their assets because their earnings remain dismal. From what can be seen in this screenshot, nearly every bank, or at the very least every bank that is included on this list, is experiencing difficulties today. Despite the fact that interest rates are rising, these banks are continuing to suffer huge losses as a result of the loans they have made. As I have said in prior videos, this will lead to an increase in the number of bank runs, bank collapses, and market volatility. When it comes to the instability in the market, Jerome Powell remarked today that it is possible that interest rates will not be decreased this year and that inflation is still holding steady. If Jerome Powell is to be believed, there has not been a significant amount of progress made in the management of inflation, which will result in neither rate reductions nor rate increases this year. This is something that I have been discussing for a few weeks now, and if we do not see any cutbacks or raises, it will place these institutions in a worse position which will increase the likelihood of bank runs and bank collapses. We will observe a rapid increase in the number of margin calls coming from hedge funds as well as from these banks as a consequence of this. It would be greatly appreciated if you could leave your ideas in the comments box below. The bank's stock price fell 5% today after the presentation of poor earnings. The company's profits fell 18%. All banks are reportedly still selling off assets since profits are so low, according to the Coastal Journal. This screenshot makes it seem like almost every bank is having problems today. If not every bank, then at least every one on this list. As a result of their loans, these banks are still losing a lot of money even though interest rates are going up. This will cause market instability, bank failures, and runs on banks to spike, as I have said in earlier films. Jerome Powell made the comment today on the market's uncertainty, suggesting that its feasible interest rates won't be lowered this year and inflation will remain stable. There has been little success in controlling inflation, according to Jerome Powell, therefore neither rate cuts nor rises are in the cards for this year. I have been bringing this up for a few weeks now, and if we don't see any reductions or increases, 